How y'all doing? My name is Michael Wood, and I am going to explain what I think the new Negro was. So, this article by Alan Alan Elaine Lock. I think I said that right. Elaine Lock. We're gonna go with that. Elaine Lock was one of the most famous defining statements of literary movements during the Harlem Renaissance in 1925. Uh, basically, what does it mean to be a new Negro? So what I took out from this was that a new Negro during the Renaissance time was someone willing to stand out. In other words, someone willing to go against Jim Crow and basically uplift blacks, you know, someone willing to take lead, take charge, to fight for, you know, their their equal rights and all that. Someone willing to take pride in all the stuff that they have accomplished, willing to basically well, you know, in other words, lead again. And it's just someone trying to make a difference too. So like all the people like W B Du Bois, you know, uh Charles Chestnut, I think I said his name right. Pauline Hopkins, Paul Lawrence Dunbar, people like them, you know. And then there's also, you know, your average person that probably that was part of the um, Harlem Renaissance that may have been like a, a underground artist, something like that. You know, still they could be defined as a new Negro because they're willing to put their artwork out there. They're willing to show that black people, you know, can do more than just work in the fields or do what white people depicted us to do. So, yeah, that's basically what I got from. His what he wrote on the new Negro. Now, what I learned was that um, again, the people that I just named: Charles Chestnut, Pauline, or Pauline, Pauline Hopkins, Paul Lawrence Dunbar, W. E. Du Bois. They didn't see the term Harlem Renaissance as useful as the term New Negro Renaissance. And that one I didn't know. Like, honestly, I haven't even heard, like, I've never heard the term New Negro Renaissance. I've always heard the Harlem Renaissance. So when I heard that, you know, that's kind of new to me. And then another thing that was new to me was that uh, that this didn't just come out during the 1925s. It actually came out early in the 1890s. And that term, the New Negro, is similar to, that, to, similar to how they used it in the 1925s. But it was basically referred to as the blacks who took pride in the demand for equal political for equal political and economical rights. And then, you know, also something that I learned was that there was an old Negro before the new Negro. And the, basically the old Negro was a creature or the creature of moral debate and historical controversy. Um, Let's see here, next question. How would I define the new Negro in the 21st century? That can be defined in different ways because honestly, that now the new Negro will be a broad term in the 21st century. So let's say the new Negro could be, let's go as high as someone like Obama. Because a lot of people they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have guessed that a black person would be the president. Like he actually rose up above all whites and became the president of the United States of America. So I would consider him one of the new Negroes because he was willing to take that higher, that higher stand above all, though they have been blacks in office, Congress, etc. But this is higher than that. This is the president we're talking about. Like you're gonna be well known more well known than someone in Congress as president, you know. So that's one thing, that's one way I was um, describing New Negro now. And then also a New Negro in this generation would just be someone who's willing to slur away from now's traditional black ways. Like, you know, you would see your average black person, well, I want to, you know, say it like that, but you know, you see your average black man walking around, pants sagging, you know, just on the street selling. You know, doing stuff that, that ain't really productive. But I would say, like, the new Negro, okay, yeah, sometimes the new Negro might actually sag his pants. We can't knock people's appearance, but it's how they carry themselves outside of their visual appearance. Like, this new Negro may be the person that's trying to start a business, you know, trying to actually find a cure for cancer, try to do this and that to better the community. Someone who's willing to strive for 
the betterment of themselves in the public. I would describe that one as someone as a, like I would describe someone like that as a new Negro too. And then two, I would honestly describe myself as a new Negro. Like, you know, me, how can I put this? I'm the type of person that really don't like working for people. Even though I've had plenty of that, I don't like working for people. Like I like to, you know, do stuff for the community on my own. I like to create my own stuff that better the community and all that. So like I would describe myself as a new Negro because one, I wanna, you know, be one of those people, one of those black known for having the top businesses in America, stuff like that. You know, I'm trying to futurely own my own barber shop and then expand that. Like, I wanna be known for my accomplishments. I wanna be known for stuff that I've done for my community and all that, giving back, you know, being that being that helpful person in my community. That can also be you know, labeled as a new Negro, because you don't find a lot of blacks wanting to willingly go out and help or willingly volunteer to do this and that. You know, I'm one of those who will go above and beyond just to help somebody else. And, you know, hey. so I would say, you know, my 21st century new Negro is, you know, again, my name's Michael Woods, a barber, you know, get at me.